Did you know that Pluton refers to igneous rock that is formed underground when magma cools down and solidifies? Magma, you say? Magma like Akainu? No. More like magma as we recently saw in Wano. Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1053. You've been warned. Hello, Manaka Matachi. This is Joy Girl, and we're going to dive deep. Deep underground, all the way below the crust of the Earth, where plutonic rock can be found. Because that's what we'll be doing today. Digging until we unearth what Pluton is, where Pluton is, and why Pluton is. Okay, maybe not why. Or maybe we will. We'll see. But we will be discussing this mysterious ancient weapon and how this is going to be a major plot point when we return from the month-long hiatus, propelling us into the next arc. And this is only the first of many riveting One Piece discussions that I will be providing you with over this dun 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 month-long hiatus. So please, do yourself a favor and do subscribe to this channel because I promise you, you'll regret it otherwise. Okay. So Pluton. The latest chapter of One Piece dropped a major bombshell on us regarding Pluton that has really recontextualized a lot of the assumptions and speculations we've had about this ancient weapon. Because up to this point, despite the fact that it was the first ancient weapon that we were introduced to in the series, Pluton has remained quite a large mystery. Introduced in the Arabasta arc as the reason why Crocodile set up base in the Sandy Kingdom in the first place to find and control the ancient weapon, we have only known Pluton to be not only one of the ancient weapons, but the most terrible and destructive weapon of the ancient world, something so destructive that just one shot from Pluton could vaporize an entire island. And this was further expanded on in the Water 7 saga, where we also found out that Pluton is a battleship that was built at Water 7, and that Frankie had been safekeeping blueprints for Pluton, as was tradition amongst the Water 7 shipwrights, to ensure that a counter Pluton could be built in the event that the original ancient weapon fell into the wrong hands. So from all of this, we have known the answer to the question, what is Pluton? Pluton is an object, something that can be built and created, something man-made. And although it was never confirmed by Oda himself, it was largely assumed that we even knew where Pluton is. At Arabasta, where all talks of ancient weapons began. And while we should know better than to just simply assume things when it comes to One Piece given Oda's slippery nature, this is something that seemed to be essentially implied based on the conversation between between Robin and Cobra when they were discussing the poneglyph containing information about Pluton. Cobra states that all the information about the weapon was contained on that stone, including information about its whereabouts. And he goes on to say that if Robin had revealed all of this information to Crocodile, then that this would have meant the end for Arabasta. And based on this dialogue, it's fair to assume that Arabasta would only be in real danger if Pluton was hidden there because the Warlord could use it against the kingdom. Except... This assumption gets turned on its head in chapter 1053 because we see Robin reveal that she has known all along that Pluton is kept at Wano, which Kazuki Sukiyaki also confirms. And this revelation foils a number of speculations that have been going around for years. For example, apart from the common assumption that Pluton is at Arabasta, the idea that Zunisha is Pluton has also been popular. And this theory is based on the premise that Zunisha was originally the battle ship, which was then fed a Zoan Devil Fruit to turn into a living, walking weapon that could never be found. But obviously, given that Zunisha has been roaming around, not at Wano, this new detail about Pluton's whereabouts obviously discredits the idea. I mean, how do you even feed an object a Devil Fruit anyways? Come on, eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Vegapunk, please explain. 
Another interesting theory concerning Pluton is that, like Poseidon and Shirohoshi, this ancient weapon is embodied in a living being, possibly a human or a humanoid of some sort. And a prime suspect for said being has been Momonosuke, which only now seems to be somewhat strengthened by the revelation that Pluton is at Wano. Now, I do want to start by acknowledging that the parallels between Shirohoshi and Momonosuke do certainly seem uncanny. They're both from royal descent, they alone possess the ability to command ancient gigantic creatures. They both come from kingdoms intricately related to the ancient kingdom, now waiting for the return of Joy Boy, and they both have been prophesized to have some sort of relationship to Luffy as the next Joy Boy. But in saying all of this, while I do think that Momonosuke may have some significant role to play when it comes to Pluton, I don't think this means he is Pluton himself, nor any other human for that matter. It's been established pretty clearly that Pluton is a battleship that was man-made. <laughs> Although Pluton being a living being such as a human could explain Frankie's disbelief as to whether the weapon could even be built, I don't think the ancient weapon will be something quite so convoluted or entail such a great twist. At the end of the day, everyone's concern seems to be about Pluton being reactivated, which connotes a very different idea to being reawakened or manifested or inherited as was in the case of Shirohoshi as Poseidon. Tell me, Mr. Frankie, you have a spare copy of those blueprints, don't you? Or you memorized it, you super genius! So some other, more plausible explanations include the possibility of Onigashima being Pluton, which is something I could see because the island continues to be ever so mysterious. I mean, for one, this speculation could provide a deeper layer to Marco's remarks from earlier in the arc when he commented, is that what they're calling it now, in reference to the name Onigashima, if he knew the island by another name, perhaps something more related to an ancient weapon. But then I'd have to question whether Onigashima being Pluton would be such readily available general knowledge. I mean, I guess we don't know the extent to which Roger told Whitebeard about the world's secrets. Also, Odin was part of the Whitebeard pirates for some time, and it does seem like knowledge about Pluton seems to be part of the Kazuki lineage. So it is possible that Marco could know about Onigashima being Pluton. Either way, then I'd also have to ask, how is Onigashima a battleship? And so in saying all of that, please let me introduce an idea to you all. The idea that Pluton is a battleship underneath Wano. Pluton being a battleship, being kept hidden underneath the land of Wano, is an idea that I find most compelling based on all the information that we have. Remember what I said at the beginning of our discussion? Pluton refers to rock formations found underground, as plutonic rocks are the result of magma which is cooled down and solidified. But Pluton doesn't only contain a geological reference in One Piece, because we know that Oda is also making a reference to one of the Greek gods, Pluto, otherwise known as Hades. And Pluto in Greek mythology was known to be the god of death and king of the underworld. And so with these two references, I think we can make out that Pluton, the ancient weapon, has something to do with the underground. Possibly that Pluton is being kept underground. And it just so happens that one of the very first facts that we found out about the mysterious land of Wano is its very unique geographical structure as an island elevated above sea level. And taking it a step further, we also found out more recently and more interestingly that Wano is actually a part of a volcano. Volcano, magma, Pluton. It's all there. And Pluton being kept underneath Wano could very well explain why Momonosuke is so hesitant about opening up Wano's borders. Wano's existence as an isolationist kingdom isn't only figurative or ideological, but also true in a very physical sense. Its geographical location provides real barriers to people from entering the country. But if the country's elevation is due to it being situated on top of Pluton, 
It also means that opening up its borders could mean unearthing Pluton, thereby leveling Wano's formation and bringing it down to sea level. And given the state of Wano at the moment being surrounded by world government ships, it makes sense that Momonosuke didn't want to open up Wano's borders if it coincides with unveiling Pluton. From the Gorosei's discussion in chapter 1052, it seems like they know why Momonosuke would decide not to open Wano's borders, commenting it to be a smart, shrewd decision. Which only seems to suggest that they would somehow benefit from Wano's borders opening, such as perhaps taking Pluton. And then I'd have to wonder why the world government never barged into Wano earlier. I mean, regardless of Wano being an isolationist kingdom or not, Surely the threat of someone else controlling the ancient weapon would have been too great. Which only leads me to think that there are some certain requirements to Pluton being activated. And it isn't something that the world government would have been able to achieve even if they had possession of the ancient weapon. I mean for one, the fact that Robin knew the secrets to activating or reactivating the ancient weapon was mentioned all throughout the Water 7 saga. But also more recently, it's been suggested that Momonosuke holds a greater purpose for his existence, something important to the fate of the entire One Piece world. And in that sense, him playing a part in reactivating Pluton could be that great reason. But then in light of very recent developments, it seems like Momonosuke's precautions to not open up Wano may not make a single difference at all, because it now seems like there'll be a real threat that the world government will end up with Pluton after all. As we know, Ryokugu is at Wano. And although it seems like he's after Luffy at this point, we know that what the world government is really after is Robin. And whilst the likelihood of Rokugu taking down Luffy at this point in the story seems quite unlikely, or even taking Robin for that matter in a quasi Water 7 Saga 2.0 fashion, that also seems quite unlikely. But the chance of him getting access to Pluton seems like a real possibility. It's something that would not only advance the plotline further, propelling the Straw Hats into the next saga, with the stakes risen now that the world government has the most destructive weapon in the world, but it's also a plot point that we could even say was planted as early as Ennis Lobby. Frankie having had possession of the blueprints for Pluton is no trivial matter. The need for such blueprints in the first place as a safeguard to be used in the case that the weapon fell into the wrong hands is a Shekhov's gun that needs to come into play. And it's even possible that this will not only involve the Straw Hats and Wano and Yokugyu and the world government, but also the other major antagonistic force remaining in the series, Blackbeard. Blackbeard is a threat that Oda has been reminding us of all throughout the Wano arc. <laughs> we were given updates of Blackbeard during each intermission between the Wano acts, and the last time we saw him, we saw Blackbeard announce his plans to leave his base full of lead island, exclaiming that if the navy are going to take the prize, he might as well claim it for himself. <laughs> Now admittedly, we don't quite know what this illustrious prize entails, but as of recent revelations, this possibility of the prize referring to Pluton seems at least plausible, I'd say even likely. Which is why I have a strong suspicion that when we return from the break, we will be thrusted into the new saga, kicking off with a great battle for Pluton. Something that ties in Robin, Frankie, the secrets of Wano, its borders, its geography, what Momonosuke read in his father's journal, Ryokugyu, the world government, and possibly even Blackbeard. And at the center of it all, the great ancient weapon, Pluton. But these are just some of my thoughts, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this matter, so please let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share this video. Please do subscribe for more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a Patreon member. And I do want to thank all our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.